UW education is a preparation for a world that doesn't yet exist. We need to make sure that the skills and attributes that our academic work encourages are skills and attributes that our students can also use in the world outside our walls. One of the really important skills that our students will learn is the ability to work in teams, to collaborate effectively with each other. There are many different ways to teach these skills explicitly to students. Randy Bean and Aaron Hill give us two wonderful examples, but there are a great many others. When you're looking through it, if you look at it and say, oh, it doesn't make sense to draw a graph for this, then don't. Okay? I was teaching physics in a very traditional style, the way that I had been taught physics. I was making tweaks here and there, but I felt like I wasn't getting through to all of my students. I felt like I was teaching to that 10 or 15 percent who tend to sit in the front of the class. Seeing what was happening in the tutoring center with students teaching other students and the benefit to both, I wanted to integrate that into my classroom. I really wanted to make my classroom more active. I ended up talking with a math education faculty member, uh, Professor Robin Angotti, who was using group work management techniques in her classroom. She had gotten them primarily from a book written by Elizabeth Cohen. I took some of Robin Angotti's ideas and some ideas from the book and integrated them into my classroom to manage the group work. I use a deck of regular playing cards to randomize the students into groups every day. So when they walk into the classroom, they grab a card, and the number on the card indicates which group they're going to be in for the day, and the suit on the card tells them what role they're going to play for the day. Because of this randomization, this means that every time we meet in class, they're going to be in different groups, and they're going to have a different role for the day. The four roles are a facilitator, and they help to keep the group on track a resource monitor who determines if extra resources are needed, like their book, the internet, or the instructor, uh, an equity monitor who makes sure that everyone has been talking in the group, and then the final one is a product monitor, um, and they make sure that everybody's thoughts and ideas have gotten onto the group whiteboard that the, the students work on. To reinforce that students should be working in their groups, I have a second deck of identical playing cards that I use to cold call on the students. So it's nice and randomized. I will pick up a card. If I see the three of diamonds, I'll ask who has the three of diamonds, call on that person and say, what has your group been talking about? What did you guys come up with for this problem or question? I teach a couple of classes at UW in which I've used groups. So one's a large lecture class that's got about 400 students. In that class, the students work on a term-long group project in their Friday discussion sections. I've used groups for a long time. What I discovered when I began to do that is that I'd made the assumption that students knew how to work well in groups, and that turned out not to be true. If I was going to ask them to work in a group, I needed to provide them some guidance on how to do that in an effective and efficient way. I spent some time looking around for materials that I thought would help me design a training system for students to use in a class. And I found a book by an organizational psychologist that talked about exact, this exact problem, how to work effectively in a group. The training exercise takes about one two-hour class period. They have to spend some time talking about how to make decisions, how to remain accountable to each other, how to communicate best with each other and with me. I think if you're going to use groups, that you need to look at this holistically. You can't just assume that doing a one-day training is going to solve the problem. Uh, but you have to be there for the students. You have to encourage them to work well with each other. You have to troubleshoot problems that they might have in the group. Uh, I even have put in my course outline an option to remove a student from a group if he or she isn't doing the work or is getting in the way of other students having a good experience. Part of being holistic means that at the end of the project, you also ask students to reflect on what they've done. So I always include a component of the grade that's based on students' peer evaluations. It's great to see students working productively in a group. They're all really engaged. They're really tackling the problems put before them, and there seems to just be lots of energy in the room. Just as we are encouraging our students to collaborate, so too must we. We have to work together at every level of the university to make this happen. All of us have to help students to understand how what they're doing here will be important to them in the lives that they'll lead in the future.